Welcome back everyone. This is the one you've been waiting for. We finally have a replacement for the MSG that works on all versions all the way up to 1.2.1. A Japanese player named Tahatano Game discovered a method to put the real Master Sword into a permanently awakened state, giving it infinite durability and double damage. Not only does this give the Master Sword the same properties as the MSG, but it also allows it to do more damage since we can stack the awakened damage buff with the one durability crit damage. Now, this doesn't come for free. There are some very steep and specific requirements to perform this, and unfortunately at the moment, those requirements can't be fully met on any save file that's beaten the game already. The first and biggest factor is that you'll need to have done all four regional phenomena, but not advance the Crisis at Hyrule Castle quest from that point. This process abuses the Castle Phantom Ganon fight at the end of the quest, so if you've already done that fight, this can't be performed on your save, and you'll need to make a new one to do it. If you do start new file for this, I highly recommend that you create a new Switch profile instead of starting over your main file. While this isn't currently possible on a completed save, I and others have theories on how this could be applied to a completed game, so don't write off your main save just yet. There are also a few material requirements. First, you'll need a fan. Then we're going to need either a second fan or one of either a portable cooking pot or big battery. Whichever of the three you use doesn't matter, but using a second fan will be harder than either of the other two options. If you need any of these, fans and cooking pots can be found right here on GSI, and here are two big batteries that are quick and easy to get. Wings aren't necessary, but they will make your life easier, so I recommend having a few of those. You'll need a healthy supply of weapons because there will be some fighting that we need to do throughout this. We're also going to need a separate dedicated melee weapon that doesn't get used in any of your fighting, but you don't need to worry about this right now because we're going to grab one along the way. Also make sure that you have a healthy supply of bows because we're going to need to kill three shock like likes without using a melee weapon or a shield. And finally, we'll need the Master Sword. Don't worry about trying to do shrines to get the stamina for this. If you convert the heart containers that you get on GSI and from the four temples, you'll have all the stamina that you need. Oh, and if you're on a version later than 1.1.2, you'll need a couple control sticks and the ability to view memories from the Pyrapad. The final thing you'll want to do is unlock this shrine right here behind Hyrule Castle, and if you're on a version later than 1.1.2, you'll also want to unlock this shrine in Hateno Village. Oh, and you're also going to need 20 rupees. But with all this done and collected, we're ready to get started. But before we do, I'm excited to announce that I've officially partnered with Gamersups. In case you've been living under a rock for the past few years, Gamersups is hands down the best energy drink out there. Their GG formula has zero added sugar and even comes with a full line of caffeine free options, so why even waste your money on any of that other garbage? They also offer a wide array of waifu cups, each featuring a new waifu to add to your collection, like the Vampiris or the Heaven and Hell cup that just went on sale. Personally, my favorite is Space Punk. And if those aren't really your thing, you can also get design cups that feature just the GG logo. So stop wasting your money on other energy drinks and get yourself some Anime Girl Thigh or Blowhole Blast or one of the many other flavors that will definitely get me demonetized. And for the next 24 hours, you can click the link in the description and pin comment or use code SUISHI at checkout to get free shipping. That means you can try their GG sample packs 100% free without even entering a payment method. After 24 hours, my code will get you 10% off your order site-wide and also directly supports the channel, so it's a win-win for everyone. Again, that's code SUISHI at checkout or use the links in the description and pinned comment. A huge thank you to Gamersups and all of you watching. Now back to the video. So first thing we need to do is head to Lookout Landing and turn in the Regional Phenomenon quest to Pura. When you do, you'll be given a cutscene with Zelda at the castle and a Blood Moon, and your Crisis at Hyrule Castle quest will be updated. Once that's done, your quests are all set, and we're going to start prepping the Master Sword. Before doing anything else, take out any item, it doesn't matter which, and fuse it to the Master Sword. We need to do this because the first time that you fuse anything to a weapon, it gains a one-time boost to its current and max durability. So if you don't do this before lowering the sword's durability, that first time you fuse will bring the HP higher than one, getting rid of the crit damage, and you won't be able to fix that afterwards. So even if you think you've already fused something to your Master Sword, do it again now just to be safe. Now we need to whittle down the sword's HP. The easiest way to do this is by just jump attacking in place. Your Master Sword should have 65 durability, and the low energy message will appear on the 62nd hit. Once you see this message, go ahead and drop a save and damage the sword two more times. This will put your Master Sword on its last hit. If you want to confirm this, you could go ahead and put down another save after those two hits and then damage the sword once more. If that last hit breaks it, then you're all set and you can just reload the save. You're good to go. With our sword prepped, we're ready to head to the castle. 
You'll want to get there by warping because it'll make it easier for us to grab something on the way. If you didn't unlock the shrine yet, you can get to the castle easily by taking the Lookout Landing Skyview Tower and midair winging your way there. You can mount a wing in midair by sitting still with your paraglider, taking out the wing, then quickly pushing forward, then pressing B to drop down onto it. If you wing over, make sure you fly straight to the shrine and unlock it. We will need this later. Once you arrive, Zelda will stop you and go through the whole dialogue thing where she tells you to come find her around the castle. But before we do that, you want to run forward toward this wall and you'll be able to ascend up. Now just navigate around the gloom. Head inside. And go up the right staircase. Here at the top will be a spear that we're going to use for later. Make sure you don't break this weapon fighting or you'll need to find a new one. From here you can chase Zelda around the castle and do her first five army fights. The sixth and final army fight will be in this hallway and she'll summon three shock like likes. Do not kill these like likes because it'll advance the quest too far too early. Instead we're going to leave the castle and set up gas. Now, the next part is going to be different depending on which version you have. If you're playing on version 1.2.0 or 1.2.1, you'll need to warp to Hateno Village. We'll be going over your method first. If you're playing on versions 1.0.0 to 1.1.2, you want to warp to Lookout Landing. We'll be going over your method second because it's easier. For 1.2.0 and 1.2.1, we need to perform stick culling and cull Effie. So once you get to Hateno, jump down this well, head to the right, Kill these pesky keys. Then drop a safety save. Now take out a control stick, wait for the like like to aggro it, then mount the control stick at the same time the like like eats it. If you get eaten and your camera stays in place, it means you did it right. The like like will chew and spit a few times before trying to attack you again and knocking your character model back in. Once that happens, go ahead and mount another control stick to unlock your ability wheel and head back the way we came. Now ascend out of the cave to get culled. From here, you want to fuse and tangle a fan to your shield with Cull Effie. I go over how to do this in much, much more detail in my last video, so if you need a guide for this part, I'll have links to that video up above and down below. Once the fan is fuse and tangled to your shield, go ahead and normal fuse the fan to the spear that we picked up earlier in the castle, and then you're finished setting up gas. From here, you can warp to lookout landing and skip ahead to the timestamp on the screen to continue your steps. For versions 1.0.0 to 1.1.2, you still have access to standard fuse entanglement, so this process will be much easier for you. So take out a fan and fuse entangle it to your shield. If you don't know how to do this, pull up fuse, then hold L to bring up the ability wheel, but right before it opens, press ZL to fuse to your shield. Now release L and mash left on the D-pad to bring up your shield menu. Your equipped shield should show no fan fuse to it. If you see a fan, your timing was off and you need to try again. Now swap to another unfused shield and release the D-pad. The fan will fuse and drop to the ground at the same time. Now normal fuse the fan on the ground to the spear we picked up earlier in the castle and you're finished setting up gas. So with our fan entangled to our shield and fused to our spear, go ahead and drop the entangled shield and throw it down into the emergency shelter. Now walk away in any direction and you'll see the fan on your spear disappear after a short distance. Once this happens, take the spear out and attack once. You'll see a gust of wind shoot out as if the fan is still there. Now head back to the emergency shelter and you'll see that the fan will reappear as you get closer, but it'll be stuck on instead of off. Now just jump down and grab your shield and now your gas is fully activated. From this point, you need to be careful what you do. If you press ZL to guard with your shield, attack with your spear, change shields or weapons, or warp anywhere, 
gas will be disabled and you'll have to come back and reactivate it. If you change equipment, you'll break the entanglement and you'll need to re-perform fuse entanglement. This is why I said to get some bows before we started. So with gas active, we want to head back to the castle. The easiest way to do this, again, is by taking the Skyview Tower and then winging our way over. Now, if you used a one or two handed weapon for gas, the gust will be aiming downward instead of up, making it impossible for you to mount a wing in midair. This is why we grabbed the spear from the castle and used it for gas. So if you set up gas without using a spear, you'll need to either build a hover bike or find some other way to get yourself back to Hyrule Castle without warping because midair wings will not not be an option for you. Once you make it back to the castle, head straight for the sanctum at the top. Our next step is going to be setting up a gas warp. Without going into too much detail, gas warping is basically a way to trick the game into loading us back to a specific spot whenever we void out. This is where our second fan, cooking pot, or big battery will come into play. So when you get there, head to the center of the room, take out whichever of the three you want to use, and select the send. Now pick the item up so it's above Link's head and then ascend right through it. As I said in the beginning of the video, this will be much easier to do with either the cooking pot or big battery. Once you get the ascent, don't press any buttons. Instead, we want to just hang out here for a couple seconds. After a short bit, press B to cancel the ascend and go back down. Now when you do this, keep an eye on the bottom left corner of your screen and look for the saving indicator. If you see it, it means that you've successfully set your gas warp. If you don't, then you need to pick your item back up, ascend up into it again again and wait a little longer before pressing B this time. Once your gas warp is set, head down to the last Zelda army and clear out the like likes with your bows. Again, make sure you do not use your melee weapon or shield or you will disable gas and have to do this over again. You can however use your spirit summons to make this fight easier for you. After you've cleared out the like likes, Zelda will tell you to come find her in the sanctum, but we don't want to do that just yet. Instead, we want to head down to this location here. Easiest way to do this will be to wing your way from the castle to Lookout Landing, take the tower again, and then wing your way from Lookout Landing to the lake. Once you get there, you'll see an NPC hanging out by a cart. Go talk to them and proceed through their dialogue until they ask you to help them collect their plushies out of the water. This will cost you that 20 rupees that we mentioned, but I mean, that's easy enough to get. As soon as the minigame starts, you want to quickly drain all of your stamina and then go drown in the river. Once you drown, it may take a little longer for that load screen to process. But once you load in, you'll be back in the Hyrule Castle Sanctum, and Zelda will start playing her cutscene as if you walked in the door, but the minigame timer and plushie count will still be on the screen. You can go ahead and skip through this cutscene to begin the Phantom Ganon fight. As soon as the fight starts, you'll get interrupted with a dialogue box that's basically informing you that you've left the minigame area. The screen will fade out real quick once you clear the dialogue, and another box will pop up asking if you'd like to quit playing. From here, select I quit, followed by Yeah, I'm done, to quit the minigame. The screen will fade one more time, followed by another quick dialogue box before giving you control again. This may seem pointless, but this process actually unlocked our ability to warp out of this boss room. So now open up your map and warp to the shrine behind the castle that we unlocked earlier. Once you load in, you'll be able to view the expanded map in your Purapad and warp away from the castle freely. And from this point, you're finished the glitch. The Master Sword is now permanently awakened, making it unbreakable and giving it double damage so long as Phantom Ganon remains alive in Hyrule Castle. And like I said, this damage buff will also stack with the 1 HP crit damage we set up earlier. Now, before you click away, there are some side effects to this that you need to know. First off, anytime you close the game and reboot it, the first time you load a save with the Awakened Master Master Sword, you'll be given an immediate text box telling you that you can't leave and you'll get warped right back to the Ganon fight. When this happens, you can simply pause the game, then reload that exact same save again and everything will work just fine. For some reason, this will only happen the first time that you load a save on a fresh boot of the game, but it will happen every time you load the first save on your fresh boot. The second side effect is that this process will effectively free Ganon from that sanctum. This means that if you ever go back to Hyrule Castle, Phantom Ganon will show up and he will chase you down anywhere you go the entire time you're there. This also extends considerably far outside of the castle. So if you leave the castle without warping, Ganon will still follow you down to the surrounding area in the castle town ruins. While these are the known side effects, very little is known about 
about this glitch and the state that we've created for it, so it's very possible that you may encounter some other issues. So just keep that in mind as you play. But that's going to do it for this one. If this video helped you out, help me out by leaving a like and letting me know down in the comments. If you want to keep up with new discoveries, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss a video. I've recently opened channel memberships, so if you'd like to help support the channel, those start at just $2.99 and give you access to special Discord channels, early access on certain upcoming videos, and much more. As always, links to my Twitch and Twitter will be down in the description if you want to follow me over there, along with links to my Discord and the Tears of the Kingdom speedrun Discord. But that's going to do it for me. I'll see you in the next one.